Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Human Board Games or Tabletop Games, an Intelligence Assessment, written by Adjutant Stormy. Tensenkron, after miraculously surviving his previously dour report to command, had been tasked to redouble his efforts on his intelligence efforts against humans. A classical venue of board games was rife with what could only be described as several millennia of combat simulations. Children and adults partake in these matches of tactical skill, and in some specific games are granted ranks that appear to be noble titles, Master, Grand Master, and the like. And confusingly, these ranks are all held by civilians. As you all know, civilian humans can be drafted to serve, but it seems neither their competence in war games nor whatever title they may achieve grants them any advanced rank, just military geniuses that can hold a gun. From the simplest to most complex, I present a sampling of some of these war games. Let us begin with Human Checkers. It is a game of two sides of equal strength of identical pieces. Each piece can be moved a space on the board unless an opponent is in front, then it advances over it. And the defending piece is destroyed. This is an excellent simulation in lightning strikes. You have eliminated one opponent, yes, but are now in dubiously secure, salient, awaiting your opponent to do the same to you. Still worse, should a piece reach your enemy's backline, you are to king that piece, increasing its power. Similar to the goal of a lightning strike of the enemy command, that unit is now far more potent at mopping up the front lines who have no orders and no morale. Once you mop up all of your opponent's pieces, you have won. This is a small-scale simulation that even humans in their pubating years can master. Next, I will discuss chess. Several thousand local cycles ago, it predates humanity's invention of firearms. More sophisticated than checkers, it recognizes the desperate abilities of distinct units. Infantry, sappers, aerial scouts, ground scouts, armor, artillery, and spec ops all have different roles and capabilities. One must understand them all to win the battle. But chess, chess teaches one when to intentionally sacrifice them. Each player has the same loadout. Each player has a king that they are not legally allowed by the rules to intentionally put in harm's way. This may as well be Division HQ. Through the distinct movements of each unit, the goal is to pin down the HQ to incite a surrender. The HQ doesn't even need to be taken. It must simply be under threat with no option of retreat. Checkmate, it's called. When the king is under threat and cannot escape, the king is not killed, nor is the rest of his remaining places unlike checkers. The match is forfeit. However, you may sacrifice any unit from your infantry, pawns, to your spec ops, queen, in defense of your HQ king, and in some rules be required to if you have any chance of victory. Indeed, in chess, if you view your position as untenable, you may resign at any point. A more honorable simulation than the melee that is checkers. I have interviewed younglings as young as seven local cycles old, who are being vigorously educated in this game. As an aside, we'll diverge to games that humans actually do call war games outright. These are fairly open boards with terrain, cover, and rules on ranges of weapons, defensive abilities of armor, morale requirements like the battle in miniature detail. One example from their late second millennium is Warhammer 40k. Warhammer 40k, considering we are not even close to the 40th millennium by human reckoning, we shall call a fantasy game, but that in humans is not a pejorative. Two players recruit, read, purchase all of the pieces for their fictional army, then they spend hundreds of hours painting them in their army's library, dutifully painting even facial expressions on even the lowliest grunt. After spending so much time and credits on a single army, they more than likely will build another. Why? Is it addiction, devotion to the craft? No. Warhammer players are lunatics. There is so many units with so many rules, with so many modifications, you can choose each man's sidearm from Zaffir's sake, it is a game about zone control. Each player has the same budget for their army. So, you're like chess and checkers. But both players are supposed to be on even footing. You cannot run an army for 50 tanks against an army of 50 infantry. That's against the rules. You win by holding the most strategic points, not even until the end of the game, but by scoring by holding it, even if you get blasted off by a multi-multi gun or an earthshaker cannons. 
You get the idea. But that's nothing in the complexity of humans' final war game. Go. It sounds simple. Whoever controls the most territory at the end wins. Players alternate placing pieces. Very few rules. If your piece gets surrounded with nowhere to go, they die. You cannot make the same play repeatedly to undo a loss. That's it. That is the most terrifyingly accurate simulations the humans regularly play for recreation. A game AI struggles to beat them in and is a perfect analogy to planetary invasion. Edit. Did I mention humans have been playing Go for nearly 7,000 years? Again, I recommend caution to command because these are fun to humans. End of story. Story number two. The Reapers fear only two things. Written by DWL52-2. Briefing from Tactic Veteran Energy Collector. Reclaimers, spur guides, soul collectors, we have as many names as there are spices in the universe. I personally prefer the bringers of light. The trench talk call us that. Odd little species. Anyways, I'm here to inform all of you of a certain species that call us reapers. A species called humans. I'll use their name for us during this briefing as it will be easier to remember that way. We, as Reapers, are tasked with gathering the energies of the dead and returning it to the Great Light. And with most of the species that inhabit this universe, our jobs are fairly easy. This, however, is not the case when it comes to humans. Luckily, most of you were not around a few years ago, and as such, have never had the displeasure of having met one. Those of you who have, you know what I'm talking about. So, for those of you who do not know, a human is a bipedal creature that stands between one and three units tall and can weigh anywhere between 20 and 90 blocks in weight. They have two arms that end in hands and five fingers on each hand, and a head that contains a brain, eyes, nose, mouth, and ears that sits on top of the body. They are covered in a thin layer of skin with meat and muscle underneath, all built on an internal skeleton. On the skin, they have thin layer of hair that covers their bodies with patches that grow thicker than the rest. While they are not as big or have as many graspers as other species out there, I must warn you, they are by far the worst to deal with. I was so naive the day the Great Light called an assembly of us to the human's territory, a small solar system in the far edge of the spiral galaxy. An assembly of reapers like this usually only meant one thing, war. I've seen it before and knew, or thought I knew, what to expect. One of my fellow Reapers had dealt with humans before, and he knew the ways of war when it came to humans. He tried to warn me about the dangers we were about to get into, but I didn't listen. The energy of the dead cannot interact with us more than try to communicate. We are still able to touch them and move them where we want. This is not the case when it comes to humans. It turns out that this assembly of reapers were being gathered because of a bug-like species invading the solar system of the humans. All of us reapers would have our hands full with this one, as there seem to be billions if not trillions of souls on each side of the impending conflict. It wasn't long after we arrived in force to witness the battle that the first barrage of weapons fire lit up the black of space and the skies over the planets. Now. The first thing to remember when you're going to be harvest the energies of the dead, humans are too angry to stay dead. As long as their body still has a will and has a beating heart, it's impossible to harvest their energies. I learned this the hard way. I witnessed a human get hit in the chest with a piercing weapon that tore through his body. I watched him crumble to the ground in a pool of his own blood. When I went to pull these energies out, it fought me. I struggled to grip on it, and after a few minutes of fighting with it, the energies formed into the shape of a human that I was wrestling it from. It hit me. The energies cannot interact with us, but this human-shaped energy specking hit me. It then let out a roar that absolutely terrified me, before it leapt back into the body I had wrestled it from. The body then shook and started to crawl away from me. Anger. The energies were able to hit me because of its anger. Calling it just anger seems too little for that emotion, though. Rage, loathing, the purest form of hatred may be closer to the right description. Human rage, such a powerful tool. 
As the battle continued, we Reapers eventually had to start grouping up on the humans dead. Sometimes as many as four of us per human that died, all trying to wrestle the energies away from the dead body. It was during one of these struggles that we learned a new word. One that described a particularly hard group of humans to kill. Marines. There were eight of us trying to get the energies from one human away from its body. The rage it howled pulled us back towards its body. That's when it screamed words we all understood. I do not have permission to die, and I will not disobey orders. This raises a question that, to this day, I do not have an answer to. Who gives them permission to die? Because it's definitely not us. On the third day of the conflict, I found the second thing we Reapers need to remember when dealing with the humans. They have medics. Now regular doctors are one thing. Human medics are a beast all of their own. We had just managed to pull the energies out of one soldier who had lost a couple of limbs and was bleeding all over the place from various other wounds. His energy was unable to continue fighting. One of our own had just started to bring the energies to the collection zone when a medic showed up. This medic started beating his fists into the chest of the dead man very violently. I almost pitied the dead one as his body was being ruthlessly attacked. I thought maybe this human was trying to help the dead man pass to the other side quicker. I was wrong. The dead man started breathing again. I wasn't shocked because the soldier came back. That has happened several times already with these seemingly immortal juggernauts. What shocked me was that when this medic did it, the reaper dragging the energies away was also dragged back and was destroyed. The energies of that reaper was combined with the energies of the soldier. We were supposed to be these immortal collectors for the great light, and this mortal creature just killed one of us by saving his own kind. The soldier lived, by the way. I'm not sure how, but I think it was due to the energy he stole from us. Now to get to the point of this briefing, you were all caught here because there is another species out there that thinks they can fight the humans and win. Your goal is to collect their energy and return it to the great light. And do remember this one thing while you are doing your duties. Ensure that a human medic has already seen to any human deaths and has moved on before you try to collect them. If you do not heed this warning, it may be you whose energy is being collected. End briefing. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, but Mori, Terran on Air, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. Thank you.